I, I think the president gave an excellent speech last week, but since then, unfortunately, we've heard some mixed messages coming out of the White House about the purpose of this trip. You have a White House spokesperson saying that the president is going to Israel this week in order to ask the hard questions of our ally. And I have to say, that's diplomatic malpractice. A statement like that signals to our adversaries, like Iran, that there's daylight between Washington and Jerusalem. And if our enemies see any gap between us and Israel, they're going to try to exploit it. That raises the risk of further escalation. That raises is the risk of Iran being tempted to open up a multiple front war against Israel. So I think the White House needs to stick to its basic message. Israel is our closest ally in the region. We have your back, full stop. And to your point, Ambassador Sales, you know, Iran's foreign minister said that, quote, time is running out for Israel to avoid a fighting, uh, you know, of this war on multiple fronts. I know you've said before that this initial incursion that we watched two weekends ago wasn't just an attack on Israel, but it was also an attack on America and Americans, too. Um, so how seriously should Israel and the United States take that threat? And what does that look like as opposed to just sticking with the message? What more can be done? Well, look, uh, Iran calls Israel the little Satan, but they call the United States the great Satan. They, they see us and Israel as their principal adversaries in the world. And when you talk about the October 7th attack, it wasn't just 1,400 Israelis who were killed. We also need to keep in mind that 30 Americans, I think actually 31 Americans as of the latest count, were slaughtered mercilessly by Hamas. Hamas is a terror proxy of Iran. It, reports are that just this year alone, Iran rewarded Hamas with $350 million worth of cash, weapons, training, um, and other assistance to improve its ability to slaughter civilians. What's Iran's next move? It's hard to say. Um, I do know that Iran is not suicidal. The leaders of the Islamic Republic are rational. They are capable of being deterred. I think it's very important that the U.S. military is right now sending not one, but two carrier battle groups to the Eastern Mediterranean as a demonstration of resolve. And the message should be clear. If Iran decides that it wants to take some shots at Israel, if, God forbid, Iran decides that it wants to take some shots at our soldiers, there's going to be hell to pay. Speaking of our soldiers, I know the U.S. is reportedly sending those 2,000 troops uh, to Israel to be on the ground in a non-combat role, kind of more of a humanitarian aid uh, sort of role. Do we or should we see that change, sir? Well, we certainly have skin in the game with 30 dead Americans. This is the deadliest foreign terrorist organization attack on the United States since 9-11. But that doesn't mean that the U.S. role in the next stage of this conflict needs to involve boots on the ground. I think our role should be, one, diplomatic, providing Israel with all the space it needs at the United Nations to carry out its goals of completely eradicating Hamas. And we also should be providing Israel behind the scenes with the very best intelligence from our uh, intelligence community and from our military sources that will help Israel find, fix, and finish the Hamas leadership and foot soldiers who pose a threat to us. Nobody wants to see the United States get involved in another Middle East war. And the way to avoid that is peace through strength. We need to project resolve and power in order to deter Iran or any other adversary from thinking they want to start something with us. Yeah. And lastly, I know you'll be testifying as a special witness uh, at this Homeland Security hearing looking at Iranian regime threats to our national security. Uh, what do you plan to share there? Anything that you can uh, share here with us on air? Well, I think the key takeaway from today's hearing is that Iran is a threat not just to Israel and not just to Americans in the Middle East, they're a threat here at home, right here in the United States. As we speak this morning, they are actively plotting to assassinate a number of former senior U.S. government officials, including John Bolton, including Mike Pompeo, including human rights activists, Iranian-American human rights activists. And they're trying to exploit our southern border in order to carry out these operations, working with Mexican drug cartels and so on. We need to take this threat deadly seriously, because if we don't, we could wake up one day uh, and find blood rolling on our streets, just as we've seen in Israel. Yeah, and who knows how much longer this lasts for, how much dire, dangerous, bloody it gets. Uh, ambassador Nathan Sales, the State Department's former ambassador at large and coordinator for counterterrorism during the Trump administration. Again, my apologies, sir, for that egregious error off the top.
Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.